So we'll start looking at adding Google Analytics to Shopify store. And to get started, let's log into our Shopify store. You can do that by coming into Shopify Partners and clicking on Login button here, which should take us to the Shopify store. Now, the first thing that we want to do is actually understand how the data flows from Shopify into Google Analytics. So let's just understand that first. So we have a Shopify website and we want to bring that data into Google Analytics. So this is a Shopify website and this is Google Analytics, All right? So a user looks at the Shopify website and performs some actions like add to cart or clicking on a product page or something else, checkout or purchase, whatever it is. Now all this data we want to send that over to Google Analytics, right? So we want to send it over to Google Analytics so that we have data for further analysis or further conversion tracking and what on. And you can use that data for many other things. The other thing that we generally have to do is not just send data to Google Analytics, but also we have to send it over to, let's say, Google Ads, all right? So now, Apart from Google Analytics, we have Google Ads. Similarly, maybe we have Facebook Ads, right? And many other platforms that you can think of. Now, to do all of this, each of these surveys have their own tracking code that they would like us to put on our website, all right? So we would have to put Google Analytics code, we would have to put Google Ads code, Google Facebook ads code, all this on a Shopify website, and it becomes quite kind of difficult to handle all these things on the Shopify website. So that's why what uh, Google have done is give us another tool called Google Tag Manager. So here we have another tool called Google Tag Manager, all right? Let's call this GTM. Now, instead of directly adding the code, into from Google Analytics into our Shopify store, what we can now do is we can add all that code into Google Tag Manager from Google Analytics, Facebook ads, Google ads, whatever. And then we just have one snippet of code that we'll implement on our Shopify, web, Shopify website. So this way, it's really easy to handle whatever changes that we want to do in just one single place rather than changing the code every time. So that is why we use GTM for people who don't know why uh, tagging uh, is uh, useful uh, to be done via GTM or why we use this tool. So this is the reason why we use this. That's that's the, the basis of how we are going to build our tracking, our, our data and bring all this data into our Google Analytics for analysis. So let's get started with uh, implementing this and there will be for the modules in the course where we'll go even deeper into how to manage Google Tag Manager and all the data that's flowing into it and out of it. But for now, let's just take a very simple example, implement the most basic functionality of GTM into our Shopify website. And as we repeat these tasks over and over in the future course, in the future exercises, it will become second nature to us as to how all these things work together. So at first instance, if you don't understand some of these things, just go with it. And eventually we'll, uh, as we repeat more and more, we'll understand how everything comes together. So we are in the Shopify website. So the first thing that we want to do is create a Google Tag Manager account. Right. So once you go into tagmanager.google.com and create our account, we are in this page where we can come in and create another account. So right now we have a Google Tag Manager account set up and we leave these instructions for implementing next. I'll just close that. And next we'll go back to, we'll go into Google Analytics, going to analytics.google.com and we'll create an account. If you have a Gmail account, uh, you should end up on this screen and then we'll say start measuring. To start with, we'll 
uh, choose web as a platform. So we'll use a store address as the website URL. Let's call it Shopify stream and we'll come back to understanding how, how all the enhanced measurements and all these things work. But for now, let's just go with the default and see how everything works. Okay, so this is good. So now we have a web stream set up and that is our measurement ID and we can come down here to view tag instructions. So what we are doing is actually installing it via Google Tag Manager. So we'll go back into Google Tag Manager and look at how to set this up first. And then we'll come back to analytics and add the relevant code, right? So let's, if we go back to Tag Manager and click on this ID here, so this should give us a snippet of code that needs to be pasted in the head section of the website and the body section of the website. The difference between these two is uh, the code that we put here in the body tag is only used when a browser does not have JavaScript enabled. And most browsers and web pages uh, have JavaScript enabled these days. So it's not much of use these days, but we could use this uh, anyways. But having just this snippet of code on a website should work on majority of the websites. So we'll just copy this section for now and then let's go back to our Shopify website and here if we click on online store and go to th themes we will find the head section of the page because as you saw here so this code needs to be pasted into the head section of the page now the best place to do that is actually in the themes page themes file so we can go to edit code this theme.liquid file appears on every page of the Shopify site. So this is a really good place to put the Google Tag Manager code. So we'll come into the head section and paste our Google Tag Manager code. All right. Let me just tap this a bit, clean up just slightly. And there we have it. Now here, if you notice, so this code over here is exactly the same as the code that we have here. So that's one way to recognize that we have the right Google Tag Manager code installed. Now let's hit save. So that's all we have to do here. We have saved and added Google Tag Manager into our Shopify website. Now to test things out a bit, let's add the Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics code into the Tag Manager now. So we can easily do that by coming into tags and then click on new. Let's click on tag configuration. This Google Analytics GA4 configuration is here, which is good. Now we need the measurement ID and this measurement ID is what we have here when we click uh, created the web stream. So we'll just copy this measurement ID for now, come back here and then paste it here. In the future, we'll look at how to put this into a separate variable and use that. But for now, this is all good send page event when this configuration load that is fine and triggering we will set this to all pages right so we've done quite a few things in tag manager now right so let's understand what all this means for for someone who is completely new to tag manager so what this tag manager does is it's going to trigger this particular tag, this Google Analytics tag on all the pages. Now we look at what are the triggerings are available. So we could say that we want to trigger the tag manager to fire up on particular pages, like maybe the product page or the checkout page or something else. But for now, we'll just say all pages. And as you use Google Tag Manager more and more, you will understand the nuances and in the future classes, we'll go much more in depth into Google Tag Manager. But for now, this is good. So let's call it because we're triggering this on all page and then let's hit save, right? So that is saved. Now let's just hit submit. Okay, so this is published now. So a really good way to test this is to go into the preview mode where Google Tag Manager will allow us to debug things. So let's click on preview mode and we need to enter our website URL here. So let's go back here. Let's exit and we'll go and view our online store. So we should get this URL. 
let's paste it here and click on connect and this should open up our store along with a tag assistant now that we have uh, our website opened if you click on google tag manager preview mode you'll see that it says it's connected and if we look at summary it says ga4 for all pages was fired so if we go back to the first step it says consent initialization next is initialization once the container gets loaded because we added one page view right so in our google tag manager we've said that we want this particular tag to be triggered on all pages so that is why we have once the container is loaded this gets fired and the dom ready and everything else is fine and in summary we have just one page view being recorded in google tag manager and this will send the data over to this particular google analytics measurement id right so on our web page we will navigate to a couple of pages just so that we can see what google tag manager is doing so you can see it says it was fired three times on once on contact page once on the products page and let's keep going maybe i'll come back to the search page and you can see it was again fired on the search page and to see how the events are coming into google analytics we can come into uh, the property section if we click on this admin panel so this should open up and if we scroll down in the property section we have a debug view and here we can see all the events that come into our uh, google analytics so we can see we have four page views uh, if you get to this stage where you're able to see some events coming into or some data coming into google analytics when you move around and click in your shopify store so that means everything is set up and we can move on to the next stage so now we have a really basic setup of google tag manager google analytics and shopify now let's add some products into our shopify store so that we have more data coming into Google Analytics and we can use that for data visualization, right? So if we log back into our store, so I'm in partner, so I'll just go back into my shop and click on products. There should be a button here at the top which says import and you can download the sample CSV for now and when you have time, you can add some products manually but here we'll just select a sample that's been already given to us by shopify so this is just a sample csv template so let's go ahead and download that okay you can download so here is the file so that's downloaded so we'll come back to our store and then we'll just load that file so once we have this we'll just say upload and continue that is fine so we have some products being loaded now Okay, so we have some products loaded from our CSV template that we got from Shopify into our products section. So we see at least one product is active. So we can go back into our shop by clicking this button. And if we go to the catalog, we should have at least one product here, a t-shirt. Now that we have a product, we can add additional events that we can track into Google Analytics. Now, when I say events, this is the piece of data that we send as one chunk into Google Analytics. And we'll discuss more about all these events and what they mean, how we can customize them and all these things in the next section. So let's start by adding a couple of events that we want to track and send to Google Analytics. So now before we get to all of that, there is a very important thing that we want to understand about Google Tag Manager, which is a data layer. Now. There are various tutorials online where people just brush over the data layer aspect because it's a bit advanced topic, but I want to make it really simple and then give you the information so that uh, you understand what a data layer is, is and not get intimidated by it. And we are really comfortable as we go along and start playing around with some of the advanced data layer manipulation stuff. But for now, let's just understand very simple how what data layer is right and how to work with it let's go back to the code section right now as a data analyst you might have to see or you might come across some code in your day-to-day -day freelancing life my goal is to share as much information as possible on how 
all these websites and the scripts that run the website actually work behind the scenes as well so that when we see some piece of code we're not afraid of it right even though we might not be able to go in there and tweak things but we should be able to understand the basic structure of how the website is laid down and we should be confident enough to go in and make any changes if necessary this is the basic theme.liquid file and this theme.liquid file is present on all our pages on our store right so we see here we added this google tag manager code now if we come in and then right click and do view page source at some place you should see google tag manager code that was added into our theme.liquid file now that was on home page but if i come into a contact page and catalog page and click on a product now if we see the same view page source we'll see the same view page uh, google tag manager code here as well because this theme.liquid file is common across all the pages on a shopify store and that is the reason why we added this here now we want to look at data layer right so let's go back to our whiteboard and see what that means to understand data layer we need to understand the basic overview of what all this data layer stuff means right so in shopify we have some data so let's say we have some data here and in google analytics we have some data as well now some of the basic data right like page views and some basic events all that is automatically collected by google tag manager which then sends that over to google analytics right where data layer becomes really important is if we want to send some custom data like maybe the pricing information or the name of the product now all these things google tag manager and google analytics can't really tell because they are not common across all the websites on the internet because google tag manager and google analytics they're just built out of the box to just work on any website you deploy to so just the page name and maybe how long a person stays on the page so all these are common across the pages on the internet so they work out of the box but if you want to customize it like some of the shopify stores and many of the applications online do we need to understand what this data layer is and how to get some custom information from all these websites into google analytics uh, via google tag manager right and let's say we have some information on this product page so this is our product page with all this and then we have here a black shirt so we want all this information to be sent into google tag manager right and then google tag manager will send all that information into google analytics right so we want let's imagine we want to send this name black shirt right so that uh, google tag manager cannot automatically detect that text called black shirt now we need to do what we need to do is we have to put this into a separate variable or let's say a separate place on gtm right and this is called as data layer right and what gtm can do is it can read from this data layer it will have this value black shirt and then that value is stored here and then gtm can read that black shirt from data layer variable and then finally send that over to google analytics as a black shirt event with other parameters that we can send right so in a nutshell a data layer is just a storage that gtm can access right so uh, to just to recap so gtm cannot directly read this black shirt variable i mean it can but imagine there are other ids and price information and something that's really not visible on the web page all that information we can't really just get from the gtm itself so having a temporary storage where we can store all this information directly and allow gtm to read all this information is where we use this data layer so think of it as just an intermediary storage between the web page and gtm right so let's quickly see what all data we have available for us on Shopify product page 
as an example and how we can put this data into the data layer variable on GTM which we can pull out and send that to Google Analytics. Now if that didn't make sense just hold on for a second because once we start doing some basic things you'll, you'll get a hang of it. Right so to understand what data we have available for us on the Shopify product page we can actually look at Shopify's documentation where we have this product and all this information so we have this information on this side over here as an example so all this information is available on this page and what we can do is we can have access to all this information and if we want we can send some of this information to google analytics for further analysis in in our visualization tool or in our data exploration efforts right so as an example let's take the id right so imagine we want to get the id of this product that the person is looking at and we want to send that information over to google analytics now as an example, it might not be the best, but this is the simplest example that we can take right now. In the future, we'll tackle more complex examples. So let's just look at this. Now, how do we access this, this ID from, from within our page, right? So the best place to do that again is let's go back into a themes page and we can come back and look at edit code section where we just added the Google Tag Manager, right? So just above this, let's play around with this and see what data we have so if i just open double close curly brackets and then start typing product go uh, shopify automatically gives us a prompt so let me just press enter and then if i press a dot we have more data that we can have access to on on this page right so if i just scroll to id so now we have this id right so what we can do is let's try to Get this information somehow on on this page and to do that i will go to the developer tab right so if you go to more tools and click on developer tools we should get a console like this at the bottom so we'll just use that for now and the most easiest way to print this is using javascripts console.log right so we'll do that close brackets and we'll cut this and paste it in here and so we need to surround this with a script tag like this so what we can do is we'll type in script right and then press enter here tab and we'll close this tag right clean up a bit so this is the most basic so we just want to see what is the product id now ideally we won't put all this code here so this is just for testing purpose so that we understand where this information is coming from so let me just hit save and let's go back to our page and if i hit reload so we should see the id being printed here so this information the id is not visible on this page anywhere for us but because we have access to this theme.liquid file we have access to the product id now so we can save this information into our temporary storage which is data layer variable and use that information and send that across over to google analytics right so you can play around with this i would recommend you to go into this documentation see what all information we can get from this right so we can even get the price so let's just try this so if i just copy and paste it again instead of id let's just call it prize hit save let's come in and reload so you can see 1999 which is i believe it should be 1999 for one of these products yes yeah, so that is on sale So we do have one of uh, the data here. Now that we have three variants, it's quite tricky to get all the variants and such unless we actually look at the more detailed information that will come in the variants. But to keep things simple, I think just the product.id is fine. So let's just remove that and then hit save. And then we have this product ID, which is perfect for us. And we'll use this as first step to add that into our data layer variable which we can send over to google tag manager so let's see how to do that next
So to add something to a data layer, so we have this documentation by Google Tag Manager. So if we scroll down a bit, we'll see all the snippets of code that we need to add onto website, which will add the data to data layer. So let's just copy this. So all this is doing is we are initializing a variable on this global window object, right? So each uh, page has its window objects here so if you come in here and type window so you see we have this object so what this data layer does is we are just adding another variable and initializing with an empty array so we can copy this section and just to test things out let's just come in here and paste it underneath all right so clean that up a bit hit save and then the next section is where we call this function called data layer dot push and push some information on here. So what we'll do is on every page load, we'll just add the product ID. So now that we have this data layer initialized, so we'll go back here, copy this piece of code, come in here and we'll just do that. So here we'll just call it product ID, right? And then we'll just copy this over into our data layer variable. So every on every page load, we'll add this product ID that we get from Shopify into our data layer variable called product ID, right? So let's hit save and let's see how this works. So if I go to Google Tag Manager and hit on preview again, so we'll go back to our store again right so our page was loaded now of course when we look in here so we won't have the the data layer variables right so what we can do is we'll go let's go back to our product page so you see if a product id is available there right so we've loaded our product page now and if you see here you'll see the product id right so this is our awesome t-shirt where we have managed to, if you don't see this, so if you go into the data layer tab here, you will see that we have a product ID now here. So this data is coming from this data layer dot push, right? So let's go to a contact page and see if uh, the product ID is available. Now here, we don't have a product visible, so there shouldn't be a product ID in our data layer variable which is what we see here. So if you just go to contact page and see the data layer variable, it's not here anymore. Whereas if you click on our t-shirt, we do see that the product ID was there. So in a very simple example, we've seen how to put data onto the data layer variable, which is quite an advanced topic if you, if you ask me, but uh, just as a very simple example on where we are getting this data and how all this data is flowing between each element is very important to understand to become a really good data analytics engineer or data analyst or whatever and thus we've done this so far and in the future you can imagine if you want to add let's say the pricing information or some variant information colors and all these things you just need to push all that data into data layer variable and in a minute we'll see how to get this information into google analytics right so let's just see how we do that next so we have this data in our uh, variable here so let's go back to tag manager and extract this data and send this into google analytics now so we'll come into variables section of google tag manager now we'll say user defined variable so if you click on variable configuration so we have this data layer variable right now we can say here what was the name that we had given so we had given this a product id name right which is product id yeah that's fine so we'll just say product id and we'll say data layer variable save so now we have product ID as our data layer variable. To use that in one of our tags, let's create a, a custom event. Now in this case, we'll use a GA4 event. So configuration, we can just pick up from the GA4 all pages, which was the previous tag that we just defined. So that is fine. So we have here, so we'll say product page view. And in event parameters, let's say we want to send the product ID that we have here. So we, if we start typing double curly brackets, we should get 
this product ID data layer variable that we just created. All right, so we'll say Shopify product ID and we will trigger this on all pages for now but in the future we'll uh, limit this to only product pages and such but for now to test things out this is fine product page view all pages as a trigger this is good and then hit save all right so we have two workspace changes that are still pending to be published so let's just hit on preview and see what kind of data we have so far so hit preview let's do connect and we should be connected here yeah that's all looking good let's go back to our product page all right so in this product page we should get an event triggered all right so if you look at the summary on our awesome page we have this product page view triggered on this tag that was fired we have some information that was sent to google analytics let's go to google analytics in the debug view we should have a product page view event all right if we click on this we have the shopify product id and there we go we have managed to send this information from the id of this product into google tag manager using the data layer variable and into google analytics and we have that information over here. Now that we understand the real basics of the data layer in GTM, let's try to understand some of the events, e-commerce events given to us by Google Analytics version four. So this is the GA4 recommended events documentation. And as we can see here, GA4 gives us some default events that that is recognized by GA4 and it's advised for us to implement some of these in our own implementation. And if I come down to the online sales section, we have a lot of events that, uh, that we can set up and these are going to be automatically set as conversions or not depending on the event that we're using. For example, if we send a purchase event, these are automatically marked as conversion and we have view items and refunds and all these things. So let's look at a uh, few of these and see how we can tie this with the data layer information or the knowledge that we've just gathered. And uh, let's send some of these events into GA4 from our test Shopify store. Now, the next piece of documentation we'll look at is this measure e-commerce section in this GA4 measurement documentation. And if you come in here, you can check either Google tag or tag manager, depending on how you're implementing. Right now, let's look at Google tag manager GTM implementation. And uh, if you scroll down, you can see various events that we have examples of, and you can use these examples as a starting point to implement your data layer variables and events. And let's look at the purchase event to start with. So here we have data layer dot push e-commerce equals null. So we are just initializing an empty e-commerce variable and we'll just clear this every time we push an event onto data layer variable. So there's no uh, residues from the previous events. So here we have a purchase event that is being pushed onto data layer variable and in the e-commerce object, we have all these values right and each one of these values we can extract them into a separate event parameter and then send them across into our ga4 events so all this means is uh, so if we take the transaction id as an example so this can be extracted into an event parameter and similarly you can do all these into separate event parameters and even items can be extracted out into an event parameter and mind you this all this uh, all this is in gtm and we'll send all of this across to ga4 now you can see where these event parameters are coming from uh, if we go to tag manager and let's say we head on create new event so let's select ga4 event and here we have all these event parameters so we can add all these information that we push onto the data layer as a separate event parameter so we'll look at how to do that next uh, to start with let's start off with a very simple example let's go to view item details so this is a simple view item event and we need to push this items array into e-commerce and then we'll push pull this information out 
in GTM and send it to GEA4. Uh, so before we touch the Shopify side of things, let's just try to do this in a very simple manner where we can understand what's going on uh, in our uh, console, in, uh, in any console, browser console, right? So I'll just come into my default store. Let's, uh, let me exit this. And if I click on open Shopify store and then I'll come into more tools and I'll click on developer tools. So this will open us, give us a, a console that we can uh, test some simple JavaScript in. So first thing what we want to look at is we want to push something onto the data layer called as uh, e-commerce equals null. So let me just copy this. And first of all, let's see if the data layer is even uh, available. So we do have a data layer variable available. Now, if you come in here and uh, when you type in data layer, nothing's showing up. So it just means that uh, the website was reset or we didn't save window.data layer variable. To add that back, so let's go back into our code. So if I click into edit code uh, and look at themes, theme.liquid file. So we can just come in here and we can paste this line called window.data layer and we can initialize that into an empty array, all right? So if we save this and go back to our page and refresh, we should still have, if I type in window.data layer, we'll still have the same thing. And because this is a window.data layer, it's also available directly to us uh, as just a data layer as well. So now that we have that understood, so let's copy this line and paste it here. And if I hit enter and then look at data layer again, now we have four entries and you can see here e-commerce equals null. Okay, so that is good. Now let's also just copy this and then paste it into our, let me just copy this entire thing. So let me just copy this and then paste it in here in a console and then hit enter. So now what we've done is in our data layer, we push this event. Right, so if I can look at data layer again, now we have five entries and if I open this up, so we have an event called uh, view items, which we just pushed and we can see the e-commerce object and all the events, the items that we added uh, from, from this information, right? So we are able to manipulate the data layer directly from this console here, which is well and good. So what if we wanted to have this event show up in GA4. So let's quickly configure that in uh, GTM and then we'll come back and edit the actual code in this uh, theme.liquid file. So let's quickly jump into GTM and I'm going to first go into variables and create all the variables we would need because remember we need uh, this e-commerce items uh, array to be available to us to send to GA4. So the first thing I'll do is hit on new and then click on this and then hit data layer variables. So we've selected this and the, the variable we're interested in is e-commerce and within e-commerce, we have the items, right? So the way we access that is e-commerce dot items. And if we look at the purchase, the way to access this would be e-commerce dot transaction ID. And for tax, it would be e-commerce.tax and for items, it would be e-commerce.items and so on. So if I just go back and we need the e-commerce.items, so I'll just go back to GTM, copy e-commerce.items and let me just call this data layer variable e-commerce.items, right? So we have the first data layer variable called e-commerce.items and what else are we sending in here? So it's just the items array for this view item. So that is fine for us. So we can go back into tags and let's create a new event tag. I'll call, yeah, it, let's select this and for configuration, it can pick it up from another tag, that's fine. And the name of the event is view item. So I can just paste this here and event parameters. Let's add a row and here I'll just start typing just that. And then we have e-commerce.items and the parameter name that we have to send it as is just items, right? So no need to send e-commerce. We just need to send the items. 
And if you are sending for a purchase, you would just send transaction ID and affiliation and so on. We'll look at that next. So we have this set up here. So this is good. So for triggering, we want to send this or fire this trigger only when a custom event called view item is pushed into data layer. So to do that, let's create a custom trigger. So for trigger configuration, we'll select custom event and the event name that we are going to send is called view item. So this is view item, I'll just call it view item as well. So that's a custom event, hit save. And this tag or this uh, tag will be fired only on view item event. So this, this tag will take the items parameter from the data layer variable and send it to GA4. So we can call this GA4 event. We can call it view item and let's hit save. And let's quickly test this out, see how it works. So I'll go into my preview mode. Yeah, that is my Shopify store. I'll hit connect. So this opens up a new tab for us. And even in analytics, what I'm going to do is come into my admin section and scroll down to debug view. Right, so we are ready to test this out. So let's open up the developer tools again. Go to more tools and developer tools. And here, let's paste the same thing that we did in the other tab. So I'll just copy this and paste it here. Let's just look at data layer variable. We have data layer variable available. So let's also now paste all of this into the console and see what will happen in, in our preview mode. So right now we have view item, which is not fired. Let's paste this, press enter. Let's go to tag assistant and we see view item was triggered here and we see that a tag was fired as well on view event and if you look at the data layer, we have all of this information which we basically copied all of this from here that is being sent to Google Analytics. So let's go to Google Analytics and in debug view, we have the view item as well and in the items, tab, if you look under that, we have all the information that we sent over from our console. So this is this is working really well, right? So we have just pushed a view item event. Let's test more things out here while we are here. So we can also test make a purchase, right? So when we are triggering this make a purchase event, we need to send additional information like the transaction ID, the value of the purchase, the currency and uh, and also include the items array. So here we have two items in this array. So this just suggests that uh, there were two items being purchased in, uh, in this uh, session by this user. So we have two items. So let's try this out. We, if we want to send all of this information to GA4, we need to extract each one of this as a data layer variable, similar to how we just did it for items. So let's do that quickly. So let's go back to variables and I'm just gonna select this and duplicate this. So I'll just hit copy. So instead of items, so we need the transaction ID. So there's a space that was added. So I'll just copy it here and this should be fine. So this is our transaction ID, save. And let's do that a couple more times for value and I'll make a copy again and this time this is the value so we have e-commerce dot value and maybe the currency is an important one so we need that so let's come in here and then duplicate this one last time Okay, so we've extracted uh, some of the variables from data layer variable. So these, these will be uh, accessible to us in GTM. So if I go back to tags, let's create a new tag for the purchase event. So 
this is a G4 event configuration it can select from the other one and this time we are going to call this purchase right and we need to pass some of the event parameters so I'm just going to add a couple of rows here and the first one is transaction ID right so we can just do the transaction ID just copy this across uh, we also need to send the currency copy that across next we need to send the items array so we just do that and finally we have the value we can send that across as well and for triggering we need to create another custom event similar to how we did it with view item so whenever an event to data layer variable is passed that custom event will trigger this tag so let's go in here and create a custom event now this event would be similar to what we will use in our data layer push so this is called as a purchase so i can come in here and call it a purchase and purchase is fine so to recap when whenever there's a purchase event being pushed into data layer variable we are going to send all this information across to ga4 so let's give it a name ga4 event purchase and hit save and i'm going to go into preview again so this will just reload the page hit continue so we have two events that are not fired yet so let's paste this from here data layer push it's good and let's just copy the entire thing for simplicity and see how it works come in here and paste let's go back to tag assistant so now we see there was a purchase event uh, that was triggered and that trigger actually fired this tag called event purchase if I click on that you can see all the values you can see some of the items that were sent and their corresponding values let's quickly jump into analytics and see if uh, this purchase event comes through so I had to try the purchase event a couple of times because in the past I had already recorded a uh, an event with the same transaction ID. So I just changed this transaction IDs to see it in here. So now in debug view, we have a purchase event and you can see here, this was automatically marked as conversion event. And if I click on this and look at the items for, we have these items and under parameters, we have uh, the currency information that was sent and uh, the transaction ID and everything else has been sent into Google Analytics for so I hope at this point you understand how to use the data layer variable to have more data from a website and send that information across to Google Analytics for uh, similar to how we just did this here. Now we can also try to automate some of this information like what we were trying to do here in the past with this product ID and so on. So let's try to instead of hard coding and pasting all of this here manually, let's try to do it where all this information is automatically picked up by uh, by a user browsing the shop right so let's copy the view items event let's try to replicate this in a shopify so i'll just copy this over and i'll come back into my theme.liquid so to get here you would just click into edit code and you just add a script tag similar to this and then paste it here so we have data layer dot push e-commerce null. So again, you can use window dot data layer similar to how we've done here, but because we've already initialized this, I can just use data layer because this is available to us uh, as a global variable. Now, the next step is to add all of this. So let's go back into here and let me make some space and then paste it here. So at this point for view item, we need the item ID and some more information. So the item ID, uh, if you remember, we can just pick it up from the product ID. So I'll just close this. I'll use uh, an inverted comma like this and do product dot ID. 
Now, don't forget to add this because we need to send this uh, variable as a string. Uh, item name, we can do the same again. So if I do product.title, I believe, and let's wrap this inside our, and let's run this with our inverted commas. Now, if you want to understand where all this information is coming from, we can look at this uh, Shopify store where we are looking at this product object. And similarly, if you're on a checkout page, you have more options in the checkout object. Let me just find it here. Uh, in the checkout object, you can find all the information that's available to you on the checkout page and similarly the payment page and so on. But for now, product page is fine for us. So you can see here we have all this information uh, like the ID, the price and the title and so on. Uh, where is title? Title over here. So we're just using all of this in our script over here. So we don't need affiliation and coupon code. We can remove that discount. We don't need that index is fine. Item brand. What can we pick from here? Uh, so I'm just going to pick the vendor item as the brand. Again, you can choose whatever you want, depending on how you've implemented your store. So I'll just do this product dot vendor will be that item category. A list name is all fine so we don't need that let's uh, look at variant if this information is available to us uh, there is a variance array but uh, I will have to choose it from there but selected variant is here so that's great so delete this inverted commas so product dot selected variant Perfect location ID, we don't need. Yes, price is important. Let's look at what is the variable name for price. So we have price here again. So let's go back into here. And price, we need to send this just as a number. So let's copy. We don't need to surround this with the inverted comma. For our testing purpose, this is all fine. We've already picked up some custom events. Uh, custom variables available to us via Shopify and uh, let's try to push this into data layer and this is good let me just save this so let's reload our tag assistant so now it's reloading our page and if I come into catalog and the product you can see here in our product we have a view item that was fired and in this view item, what we did we send? We sent example pants and the price and the item brand and so on, which is uh, what we just looked at, right? So it was the name of the product is example pants and then this is the price and so on. So let's jump into analytics, see if this came through. So we can see here, this, uh, this item came in. So under this items array, we have all the information that was sent to Google Analytics 4 by us using our code. So in the item ID is the Shopify item ID, which is uh, the product ID. And uh, we also sent in the title, vendor and the price. So all this information is coming in here. Anyway, so we have this information here. So this is perfect for us. So now uh, we've come from just looking at what data layer was and we sent a custom event into the data layer uh, using a data layer push. And in our GTM, we configured all this to send additional event parameters and everything to GA4. And in here, if we were to, instead of review item, if we had a purchase event, let's say uh, we had a purchase event, so we can trigger this when in our page, when someone goes to add cart and or buy it now or uh, perform the checkout process, we can on a click or something, we can perform a data layer dot push where we can send this across and that would come in here as a purchase event similar to how we how we got this when we just pasted everything into the the console in our browser so that's a big picture view of uh, how to use data layer variables to send events and other things so i would highly recommend you to come in here and look at this recommended event section so this what we just did does not just apply to shopify we can do this in web uh, in wordpress or squarespace or any other 
website builder that you're using because if you look at this so this is all custom code right now there might be other plugins that will do all of this for you automatically but uh, it's really important to understand how all of this works and how to read this documentation and everything uh, if ever you get stuck or if you're trying to do a custom implementation for someone so yeah have a look at all of these events that are specified by google for us uh, you can add all of these uh, refund events view items uh, list which would be a product page where you have a lot of items that you're showing in the page you can have this for games you have a couple of events as well so if you just click on one of these uh, it will actually show you all the event parameters that you have to send and you can now you understand that uh, all these are just event parameters so similar to here under e-commerce or something you just push instead of transaction id you would just push uh, uh, a variable with level or character and you can pick this up in your tag manager in your variables you can assign this to another variable like this and in your tags you would just use this as a as event parameter sorry i was looking at the purchase so yeah in here so you would, you would just have level and character similar to here so i hope that was useful for you to understand how all this data layer magic works and i'll see you in the next video